Welcome back friends. In this video, it's time to take a look at the MSR Dragonfly and answer the question, is it a good overlanding stove? So, let's get into it. All right, here it is, your standard MSR Dragonfly kit. With the exception of two things, one, what I don't have here on the table is like the windscreen that goes around this. It's basically like really thick uh, tin foil is what it is, kind of nice. And the other thing I don't have is the seal kit slash maintenance kit. It's basically some lube, some O-rings, and a tool to clean out the jets and stuff on here, and an extra jet for a different style of fuel other than uh, gasoline or white gas. Okay, so this is your basic kit. Kit. This is what you get. Now, I'm just gonna set this up and talk through uh, what I like and what I don't like about it. And the first reason that caught my, the first thing that caught my eye on the stove and why I wanted it was its size. Now, if we take away the fuel bottle and the pump here, because ideally the pump will be in the fuel bottle, the stove itself is fairly compact and it folds away really quickly. Uh, you have this little guy here that's not only a hook to keep this hose here that's actually to attach to the pump, but these legs flip out. And that's actually really nice for a few reasons. One, it makes it compact, as you saw, it's not too heavy. And two, uh, now it gives it a nice big base to stick something like a really big pot on, uh, which we tend to cook with quite regularly. The other thing that I liked too was the uh, flame adjustment right here. The fact that this is way out here is super nice because it allows you to get your hand away from a large cooking surface or a large cooking pot and keep yourself a little bit protected and have some control. Okay, cool. So that's the stove and we'll continue setting it up and we get into our first problem with this kit. So whenever you're uh, going to basically open this bottle and it's got pressure behind it, it shouldn't have any right now because it's just got a cap on it. But after you do pump it up with a stove and you open this cap up to release the pressure to install this cap, or take the pump out, I mean, to install this cap, uh, what happens is you end up getting fuel all over your hands, all over the place. And it's, I attribute it to the way this thing is vented. See, it's got these little vent holes right here. Let's see if I can show you. Right there and right there, which is smart in a way because, you know, it allows you to vent the bottle without the, th the cap just exploding. But the problem is you have to get your hand all the way around this cap traditionally. And when you do that, well, you get fuel over your hands. Okay, so get fuel in your hands, not a big deal. You can wipe it off and uh, you're good to go. Except there's one other place here. You're going to get fuel on yourself. Uh, fortunately, it's not as bad. It's not as much fuel as the other way, but uh, I was taking this out. But nonetheless, you're gonna still spill, and this one you're going to do every time you use the stuff. So essentially, this is how it goes. Pump goes in the bottle. Uh, the bottle's gonna go down like that. Then you've gotta lubricate this. They, I think in the manual they actually say saliva's okay. And then we go and we stick this guy. Yep, in there that way. Not that way. Uh, that's better. Yeah, I should get some more lube on there. Saliva. All right. Perfect. Okay, well now we, you know, are done with me fooling around. We are connected. Now the problem is this hose, right? As you saw, that is a little fumbly sometimes, even for me, and I've used this quite a, quite a lot actually. Um, I always do that on this. I always get that around backwards, even though it does have these numbers and those numbers, if they go out, you should be set, I think. Yeah, you should be set. But I can never remember that and I, I almost every time stick it in there wrong, so I have to flip it around and do that. Okay, so when you have pressure in here, there's gonna be fuel in this line, no matter if you try to burn it all out. And then when you go to pop this out, you're going to get fuel dripping out of this line which means you're gonna have to set it, uh, let it, you're gonna have to set it aside for a second and let the fuel kind of air off or off gas. That way you don't have fuel going inside your pack or whatever you're putting this in, in my case, a Jeep. Okay, cool. So those are the two cons that I have so far. Uh, the pros though is that, one, it's awfully durable, and two, it's actually really easy to pump, like really easy. Uh, you don't have to put your thumb over any holes or anything. It pumps up fast and quick. And in my experience, it takes about that many pumps and we'll be done. I might have to add more later, but that's pretty much it, it's ready to go. 
Uh, the other cool thing about this is the pump is very easy to replace. And because I have pressure in here, I'm not gonna pull it out. But basically what you do is there is actually little markings here and it, and it tells you like one, two, or three. Um, let's see if I can get you in there and show you that. So you should see a, a one and an arrow, hopefully. And then what you would do is you go there, it's gonna tell you to continue. There's the rest, right? So you have one to here, and then you twist it, and then you pull. It's got directions on, it's kind of neat. So you go all the way out here, you twist, you pull out, pump comes out. Super, super cool, a convenient way of maintaining your pump. And that's how you add pump oil to it. Um, okay, on to more pressing issues. So we got through some cons about the setup. I don't like the setup. It's kind of annoying. You're gonna get gas on your hands whenever you do this, at least take it apart. Maybe not putting it together, but take it apart, you're definitely gonna get fuel in your hands. And uh, that just kind of sucks. The other thing that sucks with this is when you go to turn on. So you have to hit this valve. Not a big deal. Okay, that valve is all the way on. And then you're gonna use this one. Now, if you know anything about Coleman stoves, you'll know they like they light really quickly and very easily. This one, uh, not so quick, not hard, but I'll go ahead and show you the process and then we'll talk about it. So you're gonna dribble some fuel in here. Okay, got some fuel in there. You're gonna give it a second. You're gonna light it. Okay. And then we're just gonna let it sit here and burn away. Now, with a Coleman stove, once you did the lighting process, basically what you would do is you would, uh, you would stand back and kind of let it do its thing. It's not really gonna flame so high that you can't take control of it, and typically you can keep it on a lower flame and keep control of it. This one, not so much. In fact, in the directions, they tell you to let it burn all the way down, completely out, and then come back to it and light it up again. Well, that kind of sucks. Uh, the Coleman stove is nice because you can just turn on, light it, and basically let it go and it'll do its thing. This one is a lot more finicky. You can see as I'm talking, it's still actually quite not ready. If I add more fuel to it, it's just gonna do a big puff ball. And I don't know how long this has been, but typically in my experience, it, it takes about a good minute, if not more, to get to a point where you can actually turn this thing on. Whereas Coleman's are very, very quick. Now that is starting to look like I can turn it on. So let's see. Yeah, okay. And we're good to go. Uh, for the most part, it looks like it's still warming up a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna try to keep this really low for my other problem here. All right, so it's all lit. That's not too bad of a process. It does take some time, but remember, when you're overlanding, at least like us, we're typically not staying in one spot for a long time. So when you have to pack it up at night, put it away, then unpack it in the morning, make your coffee, your breakfast, pack it away, drive, and then unpack it for dinner or lunch or whatever, this whole process gets tedious. Uh, it just, it, it gets old, it gets boring, it gets really annoying, and honestly, when you're in a vehicle, this is something you do not have to do. You don't have to do this setup, so there's no reason to do it. And, and you're kind of getting my theme here. I'm talking about convenience, and this is just not as convenient. Okay, so I can get past, actually, the spilling the fuel on your hands. You can use a rag or something. It's not a ton, but it is a good amount. I can get past the setup. I can get past the light, the light up process. Here's one thing I can't get past. That's loud. And we're not even pumped up all the way. And if, when you put a pot on it, it gets louder because you have the noise coming out the side. This thing is just incredibly loud. And I think that's the one complaint on it on all the forms is just how loud this thing actually is. Essentially, if you are somewhere nice and quiet, let's take Coyote Flats, and you're camping there 10,000 feet, you'll go to light this thing up, and it'll light up like it does every single time. Uh, and it'll run like this every single time, no problems. And you'll go to crank it up to do your coffee, and you will wake the entire camp up when you do that. This thing is so incredibly loud, it's ridiculous. And when you put all those things together, I just, I'm, I'm starting to not like this dove so much, and neither is my wife, my overlanding partner. It's just, uh, it's too noisy, it's too much. I know they make caps to go in there, I've never, I can't find a good review of someone who's actually done it and used it for an extended period of time to see what it actually does. And they're kind of expensive, they're like 45 bucks or something like that, or 50 bucks. And it kind of sucks, because for that, you can just go buy a different stove. That's easier. Other than that, 
Uh, there's one other big con. So everything we've talked about up until this point, like I mentioned, I can get over except for the noise. That is a big problem, but I could get over that if it did this one other thing better, but let's continue. So far, I've talked about a lot of cons and not very many pros. Um, one, it's very powerful. It gets really hot really quick uh, once it's uh, lit. It's got really excellent flame control. I mean, you can go from like, you know, turbo jet mode, I guess, all the way down to what I call candle mode. And that's literally that there is the tiniest candle in there right now. Um, just very tiny. I mean, it can't, it's such a small, tiny thing coming out of the jet and it'll come right back. And it'll run like that really well. Um, it doesn't really like wind. Wind never puts it out. I've never used a windscreen with it. It doesn't like wind though because of how open it is. It's harder to get heat on whatever you're cooking on. But I've not had a problem with wind or any weather actually taking it out, even in some pretty hard winds out here we get in the desert. So that's also a plus. It is durable. Uh, we bang it around, throw it in the back of the Jeep, not had a problem with it. Um, same thing with the bottle and the pump, never had a problem with it. Uh, it always lights the same way, pretty much no matter what. Uh, right now it's about 110 and it'll light like this when it's 30 or 110. It's the same thing, which is cool. Uh, the shaker jet is neat, keeps everything nice and clean, keeps it burning the same, and you can run pretty much any fuel. Uh, and it's nice. It is a good stove. I'm talking a lot of cons here, but these are cons for me for overlanding. And I'm sharing this in the hopes that you guys can, you guys can take this information and say, hey, those problems are not a problem for me. I'll, I'll take it, it's a good stove. Or, uh, yeah, hey, those are some of the problems I've been thinking about and maybe this works for you and you decide, hey, maybe this is not the stove for me, so you look for something else. Okay, so what's the one con that we can't get over? I gotta grab a big pot right over here. Oh, can't quite reach it. One second. Uh, okay, big pot coming into screen. So this is our baduri. Uh, it's typically what we cook on about uh, 70 percent of our meals are cooked in this thing and here's what, what we run into so I'm not gonna do a boiling test because that's a mute point just know it boils the two cups of water of water or whatever at a very pretty fast rate pretty average for light gas um, it's, it's gonna be quick so don't worry about the speed it's there but the way it boils on larger pots is a problem for us so let me get this water boiling and it will come back and I'll show you what the problem is also, I should mention, the amount of water in here is a lot. It's about here on this pot. I believe this is a 10 inch round pot. So most people will probably not use this to cook with in this manner. Uh, this is a little bit of an extreme test, but it's something I wanna show you because it's important. It's how we use the stove and how we continue to use other stoves. And other stoves work better in this regard, even my older Komen. So let me stop talking. Let's go ahead and pause. I'll get this thing boiling and then uh, we'll come back and I'll show you what's going on. We are not there yet, and I apologize for the noise, but just take a look at the burning pattern, or the boiling pattern so far, and make your bets on what's going to happen when this actually comes up to a rolling boil. Notice how it's boiling basically in the center here and nowhere else. Okay, let's turn this down. Okay, so we'll talk why this cools down. And basically that is my, well, my and my wife's biggest gripe is the way it boils. It boils essentially right here in the middle of a pot about this size, and that's all you get. Now for boiling like snow or, or boiling water to make it clean or whatever, it doesn't matter that much. But when you're cooking and you need like a rolling boil, a big rolling boil, that's hard. And like I said, this pot is about half full. So I agree, this is a bit of an extreme test. Most people aren't probably gonna cook this way. But I bought the stove to be able to cook this way because of such the large pot stands. And you can see down here in the very corner, if you look, this handle actually sticks out from the pot, the, uh, the handle to adjust the flame. So it should be able to handle a pot this size. I think it can. And you know what? The temperature as far as simmering is perfect. It works really well. But for boiling this amount of water, it's kind of a big thumbs down, which is unfortunate. So there it is, there's the review. And the answer to the question, is it a good overlanding stove? Well, first, it is a good stove. It's built really well, it can handle really big pots, it gets really hot, has really good flame control. It uh, packs up relatively small compared to other things on the market. Uh, burns pretty much any fuel you can think of. 
uh, yeah, pretty much it. So yeah, it's a really good stove and we've not had one single problem with it. But I think for overlanding, it has too many cons. Cons like it doesn't boil water the best. You don't get that nice big uh, rolling boil when you have a big pot like that. For, for uh, we'll use my other Coleman for example, the 525 or whatever it is, the old small green dual, dual burner Coleman stoves. That stove will make a nice, really nice rolling boil in that pot. And that makes all the difference when you're cooking something like noodles. It just makes things easier or whatever, pasta. I, anyway, that's a, that's a very specific example, but you get the point, right? So for that reason, it kind of, it's, it's not so good. And also the noise, the noise is awful. And um, I don't know, the setup and takedown just gets really tedious. And so for those reasons, for me, I'm going to go ahead and say that the MSR Dragonfly, while a great stove, uh, very expensive and very durable, is not the best overlanding stove, only because it just has some serious downsides. Now, if you know a way to fix those downsides, if like that silencer cap you can stick on top, I think Quiet Stove makes one and uh, I don't know, there's a few manufacturers out there now. If those actually work, please let me know and I'll go ahead and buy one and uh, we'll do this test again and basically I'll use the stove again and do another review and see if that actually helped the stove out any. I know it's supposed to quiet them down, but does it fix some of the other issues with the stove? I just don't know. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.